Hey everybody, my name is Jerry and I'm glad you can join me. Today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. One of the things I do besides ride motorcycle is I have a gravity electric project that I've been working on for quite a while. So I want you to stick around because I got a really good update. A lot of you that subscribe to my YouTube channel who've been following me throughout the last several years on this project, I got some really cool things that we're going to delve into and it's going to get specific and detailed because I know you guys like really like to hear all the details on this project. So stick with me because that's going to come up right now. Okay, I'm sure some of you remember the gearbox. Well, you can see right now, I've actually got all the axles out of the gearbox because I'm gonna make a serious modification to this. We're gonna try something really cool and different so that we don't have to deal with chain tensioners and all these issues that have been plaguing this gearbox for quite some time. So over here you can see I have the uh, one inch axle that's been taken out. And this is a 98 tooth sprocket with a sprocket holder. I'm not going to go through too much detail on that because if you want to know all about this, you can look at, I have probably 80 or 90 videos on my YouTube channel. You can go back and watch and listen to those about all the details about the sprocket sizes and why I use them, okay? One of the other uh, axles is sitting right here, okay? This is the last axle. There's three axles total in the gearbox. This is the last one. And this is, I believe, the 38 tooth sprocket, and it goes to the PMA. So I got that pulled out as well. And I'm looking at doing something with a 12 tooth sprocket here. Some ideas I'm gonna work with that. You'll notice that there is three main holes on both sides. So that's just where the axle, three axles went before. And yeah, you actually do need that many axles to get the proper gear ratio, okay? And I believe I have another axle sitting around here somewhere. Yep, there it is right there. That's another 98 tooth sprocket with the axle sitting in the middle of it. Those are also known as jack shafts. A lot of these parts come from the go-kart industry. Okay. And that's the PMA right there. This is a, a wind blue. So hang with me right now because I'm going to go and show you uh, where I'm headed with this gearbox and a different approach, okay? All right, so what we're looking at here is aluminum T-slot, also known as T-rail. Now, if you look really close, you're gonna notice there's some tiny holes there at the bottom of that rail, okay? And you'll also notice that I have what's called a pillow block bearing sitting on one of the rails right now. Let me get that to focus for you, okay? Now, if you've never worked with uh, aluminum T-rail or T-slot, it's pretty cool because, let me show you a side profile here. You'll notice that right there, right, you put that up on my knees so we can get a little bit better shot, right? Check that out. So there's actually a groove that runs all the way down the rail there. Okay, very similar to, to CNC tabletop grooves and so on and so forth. These are used in uh, a bunch of different type of industries. Okay, what I'm going to use it for is, as you can see, I'm actually going to mount a pillow block bearing on there. Okay. Now, I specifically bought this size. And what it allows me to do is, is slide the pillow block Look at that, right? Now these are 3 8 inch bolts and the actual bolt head slides right into this groove right here. And that's why it won't come out. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. You can see the bolt head right there, right? How cool is that? So the bolt head just barely fits in there. That actually secures the bearing from coming out of there. Okay, so these holes right here, of course, allow me to mount this rail anywhere I want. So what's gonna happen? We're gonna take this rail, mount it to the top of the gearbox, okay? And then we're gonna run a shaft from 
one pillow block bearing to the other and the shaft's going to go through it, okay? And the sprocket's going to be sitting on that. So, okay, so now you have a little bit of detail about what I'm going to do. And of course, the natural, natural question is why? Why do we want to do that? Well, up to this point, it's been very difficult to get good chain tension and alignment. It's always been a, a little bit of a bugaboo. And when you're dealing with some really high gear ratios like I am, it, the slightest improper chain tension or slightest misalignment is magnifies itself exponentially. It's crazy. You'd be amazed how big of a problem such a small thing like that can be. Okay, binding and all that. I've talked about that before in some other videos. So this is going to allow me to move the pillow block bearing anywhere I want along this line, right? So I got a box of bearings here that I bought. I have a couple more coming in because I'm going to later run another video on the winding wheel and how I plan on going about doing that. Okay, so for now, let me just see if I can get another bearing out here. Okay. So there's another bearing. I can take out the bag right now, but just imagine if it was sitting. Okay. Right there. Okay. And of course, there would be one right there and one right there. So we'd have an axle here with sprockets on it, an axle there with sprockets on it. And now with that configuration, I can move either one of those bearing sets with an axle closer or further away from the other one, right? And of course, that's a, that allows me to tighten my chain and loose my chain really, really easily. And my only concern is going to be whether or not I can lock these down sufficiently enough that when they're under load, whether or not they're going to move. So that's a test I'm going to have to run. Okay, but for now, this is looking pretty good. And these rails, they're fairly inexpensive, so this approach isn't, isn't breaking the bank. Okay. Now, let me take one of these rails, and I'm going to go back to the gearbox, and I'm going to show you how I plan on mounting this on the gearbox, okay? Now we're back over at the gearbox, and you can see that I have some angle iron here, right? Just good old-fashioned, fairly inexpensive angle iron. This one's been sitting around for a while, so it's a little rusty, but it'll serve the purpose for this demonstration, okay? So I want you to imagine that this angle iron is actually all the way up on the gearbox up here, okay? Flush to the top of the gearbox, okay? And of course, we could drill some holes into the side of the gearbox and drill a hole through here and just run a bolt through it. So that would mount this angle iron right there flush to the top of the gearbox, okay? Of course, we would cut it to length and all that, all right? Now, so imagine that being in place like that, mounted and bolted to the top of the gearbox flush to the top. Well, you can see there's a flat surface here, right? So it shouldn't be too hard, too hard to figure out what I'd be doing next, right? Of course, if I can get all these components to play nice so they're not fastened to one another, but I think you get the point. What's going to happen next is this rail is going to sit right on top of that angle iron. And I'm going to use these holes to bolt this rail to the angle iron, which, which will be fastened to the top of the gearbox. Okay? Also, it'll probably allow me to move this side of the gearbox closer. I don't need all this space. So I'll probably reduce the footprint of this gearbox and get it smaller. I might even reduce it this way. We'll see if there's room to do it. So that's the plan for the gearbox. And that's gonna allow me, as I already demonstrated, to have easy control over widening or bringing the axles cl closer together, which is what I really wanna do, as close as I can get them. And not have to worry about chain tensioners and all that stuff. Okay, so that's the plan for the gearbox. All right. Now, the winding wheel, which I'm still in the middle of designing because I can't get anybody to build me a winding wheel for a reasonable price, so I'm going to do it myself. But the premise behind the winding wheel is going to be something like this. Sorry about the light being a little dark over here, but I'm on the other side of my garage and it's not as bright over here. Okay, we're going to take a pipe very similar to this. Um, it's going to be three-inch pipe. Let me get over in a little bit better light here. 
This pipe is not quite three inches, but it'll serve the purpose for demonstration. Okay, this sucker's really heavy, so I'm gonna do it one-handed here. Okay. Okay. So, we're gonna go with a pipe like that, okay? It's gonna be three inches in diameter, and this wall here is only a quarter inch, but we're gonna go actually with a half inch wall. Okay, and why? We're gonna use this pipe as the hub, the center of the hub material for the winding wheel I'm gonna build. Okay, and yes, pipe actually has less flexion or deflection than solid rod. Okay, trust me, I've gone the solid rod um, route and anytime you lengthen a solid rod, it is gonna flex and bend like crazy under load. The pipe won't bend and flex nearly as much, especially if you keep your length short. Okay, so we're gonna use something similar to this. It's gonna be three inches in diameter. It's gonna be a half inch wall, and that's gonna serve as my center of my hub for the winding wheel. And spokes are, are gonna come off of the center of this and I'll get into the design later and show you how I'm gonna do that. There's gonna be some welding involved and stuff like that, okay? Now, we're also gonna use the exact same material for the very first axle on the, on the uh, gearbox, okay? So over there at that end, instead of going through those holes, the pipe's gonna come across the top, okay, and meet up with that rail I just talked about. And on that end, we're going to use a re two really big bearings, one on each side. They're going to be three-inch bearings to support a pipe similar to that one, okay? And that pipe on that first axle is actually going to extend outside of the gearbox and go and, and match up with the, um, a chain coming from the winding wheel to that tube, okay? So we're not going to be using the weightlifter's rack. You can see the bike in the background, right? Yay! So we're gonna be—we're not using this anymore. No more weight rack, power rack. We're actually gonna build out our own structure to hold the winding wheel. Okay, I'll get into that later. But the gearbox is gonna be up in the air, and it's gonna be pretty close to the top of the ceiling. Um, and this ceiling in this garage is probably. I don't know, I guess it's cl close to eight feet, probably just a little short of eight feet, somewhere around there. Okay. So the gearbox is gonna be elevated up in the air right next to the winding wheel, okay? And I'll show you that design later because I haven't finished up drawing up the design because I'm still contemplating how I'm gonna do all that. Well guys, I hope you got something out of that video about the gravity electric generator and where I'm headed with that. Listen, I'm really excited about this. I think the biggest challenge in this project is gonna be actually um, designing and welding up the winding wheel because it's going to be a four foot diameter winding wheel that I got to do myself. So that's going to be a pretty big challenge. It's going to be the first time I ever did this much welding, welding on one project. So wish me luck on that. The other big challenge is going to be actually building the structure to hold the winding wheel and the gearbox, which is going to sit next to the winding wheel. So I'm pretty pumped up about this. Um, this winter going to be some, maybe a little, just a little bit of downtime on some other activities that I can't do because of the weather. So I think actually I might have an opportunity to work on this gravity electric project. So guys, listen, I'm really glad you stayed with me this far. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and click that Texas flag right down there and subscribe, or it might be over in this corner. Just go ahead and click it. Give me a thumbs up on this video. I really appreciate it. Stick with me guys. We'll be back here again real soon next time.